Um, we've been in this series on Only Believe for a little while now. I thought it was kind of important to do this because there's a lot of things as Christians that we say that we believe, but do we actually do them? And I, I suggest to you if, you, if you think you believe them, but you're not enacting them in your life, do you really believe them? I mean, if they're worth believing, if there's truth there, then we should live it. And I believe sometimes that it kind of creeps in on us, and there are things in our life that we, we say what we just don't value. We have a different value. And we don't want to follow the value of this world. We want to follow the value of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And he said to us in this first sermon that he preached, and I think it's not insignificant, that the very first thing in the Sermon on the Mount was, these are the attitudes you need to follow. These are some things that you need to do in your life. And if you do, you will be blessed. The word means anointed. Some translate it as happy or full of joy. And I want that in my life. To walk the Christ life, there are blessings that come with it. But to not walk the Christ life, the opposite occurs. If you do God's will and God's way, he honors and blesses. If you do not follow God's will, then the opposite or a lack of blessing comes from it. For instance, the very first one says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Those who do not think that they have standing before God, that they can impress God in some way, but they, are, they feel like spiritually they're bankrupt. He says to those people, the kingdom of God will be yours. But to those people who feel like that they have it all, that they've got it all, well, the things of God won't be theirs. If they're rich in spirit, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Blessed are those who mourn, who grieve over their sin in their life. Those people will be comforted. But to those who don't mourn over their sins, but they gloss over their sins, they ignore those sins, they won't be comforted. They're going to spend their life being restless and disturbed. Blessed, it says, are the meek, those who know the will of God and who give themselves unto the will of God, the ways of God, and follow that. Those people, it said, they will inherit the earth, the inheritance of being one of God's uh, children is the things of God will be taken care of for you. But he says, if you follow your own way, you'll be left empty. I don't want anybody to be left empty, of you, would you? He says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They're going to be filled, but if you're already filled, God can't put into something that's filled with something else. Else, If you're hungering and thirsting for other things, that's all you got. And that's not a good place. Blessed are the merciful. God will give those people mercy. But if you don't give mercy, you're not going to get mercy back. You will get judgment. We need to be careful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Those who, are, who do not have the divided heart, but their heart, by the way, doesn't say perfect heart, pure in heart, cleansed by God, seeking God, wanting to follow God. It says to those people that are pure in heart, they will see God, but if you don't, if you have the divided heart, you're not going to see God. Though you will look for him, you will never find him. And then we come to the one that we will look at today when it says in verse number 9. Would you stand with me in honor of reading God's word? Matthew chapter 5, verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. Peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly gr glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. We need to hear what this means to us personally. And I think that this is one of those that is probably as ignored, though we say that we believe this. I'm not too sure that this is not one of those that is the most ignored and the human instinct comes out. My prayer today is that you won't hear a message from Brian. My prayer is that our hearts will be open to hear a word directly from him to apply his word in the places in our life where there may be hurt and pain and brokenness and healing can occur. That's what God wants. Blessings. Happy 
even joy. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we need you. We're nothing without you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for goodness. And we thank you for making it personal for us. Thank you for uh, teaching this to us. But Lord, sometimes we let other beliefs creep in. So speak personally, Holy Spirit. Let us hear directly from you. We want your will more than anything else. We want to bless you as you have blessed us. And Lord, we want to be a blessing to those who may not know you or to those who are following a different path. Lord, in the next few moments, if all the, we hear is just the ramblings of some preacher, we will leave empty and hungry. But if we hear from you, we will be blessed. So speak, Holy Spirit. Your servants are listening. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. I'm not too sure of all the attributes of God that we know that the one attribute that is the easiest to understand and explain is not peace. It is one that is overlooked often, but yet it's so easy to see. that The language is so picturesque. If you have two people together, and something has happened to them, and because of that, they have divided, and one is going in this direction, and the other is going in this direction. Now the problem with that is when they are divided and going in other directions, there is no unity whatsoever. But if something occurs that brings them back together and two sides going in opposite directions are brought back together and become one, that is the definition of peace. If there's distance between the two, that's not peace. If something has occurred, if brokenness or hurt or pain or something was said, and, and up from that, or maybe something was done that one person doesn't even know or realize, but because of that, there's been a break in that relationship, then the peace has been taken away. And God says, blessed are those who are peacemakers. We need to not understand that this is extremely important to Christ. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, it tells of the Christ, the Messiah, our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. It says of him that he is the Prince of Peace. That is, that the Son of God is the peacemaker for us. That is the gospel. That is the gospel defined and lived for us, that God was in heaven, perfect and complete, and needed nothing but his creation, man, with their sinful nature, was sinning in their life. And that sin separated them from the holiness of God. And because of that, they were eternally separated from each other, going in different directions. Please hear this. Please hear this well. Jesus, that wasn't good enough for him, and he took the first step. And he left heaven, the Son of God, to come to earth to be the Son of Man, the Savior, the Messiah, for us to live the sinless life, to, be, to go through all of the things that he went through, all the difficulties, all the things that were said and done against him, and yet he, he, he was meek, he, he maintained the will of God. And yes, even all the way to the cross of Calvary, where he gave his life a ransom. He was our sacrifice. He shed his blood so that his blood could cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He gave his life, was put in a tomb, but he was resurrected. Listen to me, to live living resurrection. Because that's what we need. We are dead in our trespasses and sins. And we need a Savior that can come so that we can live living resurrection for now and forever. He made the way. The Prince of Peace became our peace 
maker and how blessed we are. To think of all of our sin that's separated, but we become one in the bonds of his love. A child of God, saved forevermore. Nothing can come against you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. You're a child of the king. And yet, given this great gift of life, we somehow sometimes let other ways creep in. There was a person named Lucifer once who was perfect, but he chose another way. He chose the sinful way and was separated from God because of that. Now, Lucifer looks at Jesus as his enemy. And those of you who love Jesus, you're his enemy too. Don't you think for a skinny second that, that the Satan is not coming but to steal, to kill, and destroy? He wants to divide. He wants to conquer. He doesn't want you to have peace. He wants you to have brokenness. He comes in to, to take you from the love of God. And he wants to, to come in and dump all of his evil on you. If that's what he does and you are seeking to be a peacemaker, you will be his enemy as well. If you love God, he's going to come against you. Don't be surprised by that. You're the in, he is the enemy of peace. He is the father of lies. But if you're going to be Christ-like, if you're going to live like Christ, then you're going to act like Christ. And if Jesus is a peacemaker, you're going to have to choose to be a peacemaker too. Are you listening? But it doesn't mean a peacekeeper. There's a difference between a peacemaker and a peacekeeper. A peacemaker has been filled with the love of God, and wants that love to be in other people's lives so that they can have peace as well. But a peacekeeper is one who just wants to keep the status quo without acknowledging that there are issues in an effort to maintain peace. Just don't disrupt it. Just leave it the way it is. We, we don't want to disrupt what's there. You might mess it up. You might make it worse. Y'all look at me. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Matter of fact, some people think that they're being holy by being a peacekeeper. It doesn't work. Our country, I think the greatest country in the world even still, I'm grateful for what our founding fathers did. They came from other places where uh, there was not a division of power when they set up the Constitution. And, and because there wasn't a division of power, it would always go to that one leader who wanted all the power over everything. But our country's a republic. And we fought a war over how that republic would look and the rights of the people. And some would say states' rights. And yes, it was states' rights. But listen to me. The war was intensified because half of the states, their economy was based on slavery and they were not willing to let it go. And they would said, we need to keep the peace. At all costs, we need to keep the peace. And when they found that they could not, they fought a war over it. And at the end of that war, our country was to come back together. And they created three new amendments to the Constitution to say that everybody was free. I, I can't understand how somebody could look at somebody else and, and say, that human being is my property. I don't understand that. They don't have rights. I have rights for them. I don't understand that. But about 40 years, 45 years later, a, a case came before our Supreme Court at the beginning of the 20th century. It's called Plessy versus Ferguson. And, and, and it was a decision eight to one. 
And this is what they said. All people are equal, but it's okay. We're going to let it be separate, but equal. We, we'll say people are equal, but, but, but this group has to stay here, and this group, they have to stay over there. And, and this group can do this, but this group can't. They have to go do this. And they called it separate but equal. Y'all look at me. Doesn't work. Didn't work then. But they were peacekeepers. They didn't want to fight the Civil War over again. And they just wanted to keep the status quo. But hear me, my God doesn't have separate but equal in heaven. Things were made equal at the foot of the cross. God looks at no one differently. The blood of Jesus Christ saves us from our sin. Are you good with that? If you're good with Jesus, you're good with that. For God so loved the that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. There is no separate but equal. It's just one in the bonds of love. Y'all hear me? Be careful about the peacekeepers. I've been ministry, in the ministry for a lot of years. And you may not realize this, but I have faced over and over and over again, I have seen abuse. I've seen child abuse. I've seen spousal abuse. I've seen someone bullying someone else. I've seen employers abuse employees, put threats over them. And it, I've been to the hospital to see women beaten, raped. They don't say nothing. They might take my kids. We, di we just have to sweep it under the rug in the sake of being a peacekeeper. And good people, have you ever heard this, go along to get along. Have you ever heard that? That's not my Lord. That's not my Lord. But yet people do it to be a peacekeeper instead of a peacemaker. It's really the, exactly the way a lot of Christians look at a person who does not know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. We call them lost because they're not home. They haven't found their way home. But because they're my friend, I can't talk to them about the Lord because if I talk to them, I might lose their friendship. To be a peacekeeper, they'll just go along to get along, and they have friends, come on now, family sometimes, that they'll never tell them about the goodness of the, the, the love of Jesus Christ and what Jesus did to, to save you and change you and make you whole and make you complete and bring peace into your life. Instead of sharing that, you just allow Satan to tell you that it's okay, be a peacekeeper. Just go along to get along and sweep it under the rug. Y'all listen to me. That's not the ways of Christ. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And we don't want anyone to spend a skinny second, much less eternal life, in a place separated from God and His love, in a place that's called hell. So what did He tell us? He said, I give you the gospel. Listen to me now. You heard me say it before. Jesus took the first step. That's the gospel. He left to come for us. And if you are going to be a peacemaker, you're going to have to go into broken situations and you're going to have to take the first step. You're going to have to go in with the love of Christ by the way, you can never be a peacemaker unless you first receive the peace of God. But as you have you received, freely give. And do what Christ did, bring together. Satan wants to separate. He wants to cause divisions. God wants us to come together, one family, one love. Take your Bibles. Lord, help us. First Peter Turning on over to the end of the New Testament, to the book of 1 Peter. Peter was a, you know, he was hard to get along with for a long time in his life. 
He was an old fisherman. He was rough. You know, he probably had foul language for a lot of times. He would speak his mind. As a matter of fact, there are times that he thought he knew better than Jesus did. Jesus said, I've got to go to the cross. I'm going to Jerusalem, and I'm going to the cross. And Peter's like, hey, Lord, it doesn't have to be this way. You don't have to go to this cross. Come on. The, the rock is standing behind you. I'll, I'll help you out. You know what Jesus said to him? Get behind me, Satan. Right? I know what i got to do. This is the same guy when they came to take Jesus, when the soldiers came to take Jesus, he took a sword. I believe he was trying to cut the guy's head off. He got an ear instead. Right? This is that kind of guy. But I want you to see what the love of Christ can do. In this epistle, 1 Peter chapter number 3, hear this rough man what God had done in his heart. Verse number 8. Finally, all of you be of one mind. Church, just one mind. And by the way, that's not mine. And it's not yours. It's his. All of you. You know what it says? Be of one mind, having compassion. You hear that rough fisherman? Have compassion for one another. Love his brothers. Be tender hearted, not cold hearted, not hard hearted. Be tender hearted. Be courteous, not returning evil for evil or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, blessing. Give blessing, knowing that you are called to this as a Christian. This is your job. This is your privilege. This is what happens when the blood of Christ flows from you. This is the burning of the Holy Spirit wanting to do a work in this world. You were called to this. If you were called to the gospel to give your heart, to give your life unto him, then it belongs to him and you will serve him. And as he is a peacemaker, you will be a peacemaker. Look what it says. Knowing that you were called to this, that you may inherit a blessing. For he who would love life and see who good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil. Be careful what that tongue says. Be careful about talking down about the ones that Jesus died for. Be careful about talking bad about them. Be careful about talking in a way other than love. Let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Look at this now, verse 11. Let him seek peace and pursue it. You're going to hear that word pursue quite a few times. That means to go after. It's in the present imperative term. That means you continue to go after it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous and his ears are open to their prayers. Praise God. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. We could even say who allow evil. Romans chapter 12, verse 18 says this. If it is possible. Now, church, it's not always possible. But if it is possible, as much as depends on you. In other words, you can't, you can't make decisions for someone else. But if it's possible... With everything that you can do, put yourself into it. He says, live peaceably with all men. That means there may be something that happens and brokenness occurs because of it. Instead of just letting bygones be bygones and sweeping it under the table, no, no, no. You've got to go seek, pursue peace. Preacher, that may be difficult. God made us big. He gave us strength. We can do it. 2 Corinthians chapter 13 says this. Become complete. Don't lack anything. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. Just think right now. Do you have brokenness with anyone? Do you have brokenness that you know is there? There's some level of heartache and pain. But it says, be comforted, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. If you go to seek to be a peacemaker, that's the act of Christ. He'll be with you, right there to help you. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 14 says this, once again, pursue peace with, what's it say? All people and holiness. 
without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully. This is one of the most important scriptures in all the New Testament. Looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and uh uh-oh, by this many become defiled. Brokenness will happen. Hardships will happen. Emotions will get involved. People will say things. People will react badly. And there will be a hurt. There will be a wound. But if you don't find peace, something will grow around that wound. Hurt and pain will occur. Brokenness will happen. And if it remains for a period of time, a root of bitterness may spring up. By the way, that will defile you But it also says many will be defiled because of it. And Satan will laugh and laugh and laugh. Romans chapter 14, verse 19 says, Therefore, let us pursue, once again, the present imperative, always doing this, always in the present tense, always seeking remedies. Let us pursue the things that make for peace. And the things by which one may edify, build up, help one grow. Church, this happens so easily to be broken. And we think it's so difficult, but usually the only difficult part is if a person just fails to start. Making up your mind that you're going to be like Christ. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. But in this world, it's not always going to be easy. Look what it says, Matthew chapter number 5, verse number 10. Blessed are those who are persecuted. Uh Uh-oh. It sounds difficult. Look, if you're the enemy of Christ, Satan will leave you alone. But if you're the friend of Christ, you're the enemy of Satan. He's going to come. Y'all trust your pastor? I'm going to tell you something. That's not an if. It's coming. If you want to seek to follow the things of God, it's coming. Satan's going to come, and he's going to come with everything that he's got. Blessed are those who are persecuted. That's when you are, people mean hostility towards you. Blessed are you when you're persecuted for righteousness' sake, for doing the right thing. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. It begins with the beatitude of blessed are those who are poor in spirit, who are spiritually bankrupt. God will give you everything. He says here at the end, I promise you, you'll have everything. Blessed are they when, blessed are you when they revile you. That that is the term of coming at you with their teeth. Really, you know, you can kill with words. And it's a picture of grabbing a hold and not turning loose. Some people are just that way. They've been wounded, they've been hurt, and they just, they just want to tear you down. Isn't that what they did to Jesus? Blessed are you when they revile you and they persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. He says, rejoice. Has anybody ever had anybody lie about you? Anybody ever been gossiped about? Anybody ever taken a half-truth I mean, somebody took a half-truth and they just, they just wanted to tear you apart. No? None of y'all? Man, I got a good church. I'm telling you what. Man, I've been torn out of the frame. Let me tell you what's the hard part. Y'all, re- y'all ready for the hard part? John 6 says you keep your mouth shut. You don't bear witness of yourself. You don't defend yourself. When they come and speak evil against you, it's your responsibility to take it. Jesus never said a word back. That's hard. When they are, and you know they are, and they know that they are, and they know that you know, but because you're not coming back after them in a free-for-all, in a bloody fight, they just feel like they have a free reign to come and just pour out evil on you. Now, I'm good with this in one sense. God's the judge of this. Amen? Not man. Just let the one who actually knows what's going on, let him handle it. And I'm amazed by people who buy into this and they put more trust on on the word of a friend than they do the holiness of God. It's tough when they come and speak 
all kinds of evil against you. But he says, don't take it so bad. Rejoice. I've had this happen to me. And I, I, I really have learned what it means to love your enemy. Do good to those. Hey, they're, they're just coming at you. Hey, I said this in the first service this morning. I think everybody kind of related to it. If, 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 I came up, if somebody came up to me and poked me in the eye, you know what I'm going to want to do? Amen. Uh, quickly and harder. Are y'all good with that? Amen. Somebody comes up and kicks you in the shin, what do you want to do? Kick them back. Somebody wants someone to say something about you, you, you know, what, what do you want to do? You want to, if they defame your character, you want to speak against theirs. Right? They come and attack you, what do you want to do? Attack back. They want to discount you, what do you want to do? Discount them. Sounds easy, doesn't it? But he says, no, 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 no. Change your mind, change your attitude. <laughs> I've got everything that I'm wanting to give you. I've got so much, everything that is good, everything that is perfect, everything that is love, everything that flows from the grace and the mercy of God, all the riches of all of glory forevermore, all the peace that goes beyond all understanding, I want to pour it out upon you. So just rejoice. Don't worry about that. Great is your reward. Hey, you're in good company. They did it to the prophets. They'll do it to you. A few months ago, I read a book. Uh, Louis Giglio wrote it. He's a pastor in Atlanta. And it was on Psalms 23. But it was really on one phrase in Psalms 23. Y'all, have, have any of y'all ever heard of Psalms 23? And there's a phrase there that says, Thou hast prepared for me a, a table before me in the presence of my enemies. I never really thought about this until Louis said it. He said, God's put this table there and he's put some chairs around this table. And he has put so much good on this table. My goodness, it smells good, it looks good, and I want to eat. Amen? Amen. Some of y'all are saying, if you'll hush, we'll go and eat somewhere, <laughs> right? And, and, and we want to eat, and God's prepared it, and I believe he cooks pretty good, don't you? And it's there, and it will satisfy, and, and it's all you want to eat. And you're going to scoot up to the table, and he's going to sit here with you, but around that table are all your enemies. You have prepared a table before me, in the presence of my enemies. Wouldn't it be great if he just said, hey, y'all go away. Leave them alone. We're going to have some fellowship together. Y'all go away. That's called heaven. We're not there yet. But while we're here, and if God allows evil to happen, and he's sovereign and almighty, then don't worry it's not the evil that's going to happen. That's, that's a certainty. But how you act in the midst of all of this ugliness, you don't have to join in. Your job is to be like Christ, living resurrection. That's the gospel. As he came and interceded and made a way, being the prince of peace, he says to us, blessed are you if you are a peacemaker too. Oh, you're going to go through hardship. Yeah, you're going to go through difficulty. That's okay. I got this. I'm there for you. I've prepared this table before you. Man, it's good. But your enemies are going to be swirling. But get your eyes off of your enemies. Pray for your enemies. They slap you on the cheek, turn the other cheek. They want to ridicule you, allow it. They want to steal from you, let it. Something's going on in your mind right now. You're saying, I'm not. Jesus did. Christ-like. Jesus did. They ask you to go one mile, go two. When I leave this place, I get to be in heaven forever. 
This is just a way station. My life verse is Philippians 3.10. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I believe that means the power of the gospel. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. That means being one with him in suffering. Being made conformable even unto death. That's the gospel. That's the good news. He gave so that we could receive. You give so others can be blessed. And by the way, in the process, blessed are you. Anointed with the hand of God. Happy are you. Full of joy. It's your choice. When I begin this, I said, you know, some of these, we say that we believe them, but let me ask you. I asked you earlier, do you have any hurts? Do you have any brokenness? Do you have any hard relationships? Have you just let it go, trying to be a peacekeeper, hoping things would be different, or are you a peacemaker? Are you persecuted? If you do righteousness, those who, those who live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. That's just, that's the truth of God's word. But don't let Satan drag you down to his level. Drag those up, other people up to the level of Christ. 